What is your assessment of the civil rights situation in the Middle East? Uh, the civil rights situation in the Middle East is not particularly good. Generally, the region is run by authoritarian governments that look out for the interests of certain groups and don't respect the interests of other groups. What activism there is is generally quite restricted. I could hear people being tortured coming through the walls of the prison. So many people would be having Gaddafi story. You know, my friend, a guy told, told me about being arrested for years for something he hadn't done. Um, I told my friend, hey, get that guy's address so when I come back with a camera I can film a proper interview. And he's like, okay, but you know, everybody has a story about Gaddafi. Matthew Van Dyke a journalist who took up arms before the Libyan resistance, had been held in prison for 85 days with little light, little human contact, and little hope for survival or freedom. Matthew was never formally charged by the Gaddafi regime for any crimes. He was simply thrown in jail and left to die. While only his rights were violated, his story was common among the Libyan people. Gaddafi's regime brutally silenced its citizens. This is where I spent about 85 days. When I was first captured, this little just this skylight here to look up. I used to lay like this and look up into the skylight and hope that there was an American satellite going across the sky that could see through this hole and see my face. The Libyan people had wanted a peaceful revolution, a method which had successfully overthrown the Egyptian and Tunisian regimes. But like Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, Gaddafi forced the Libyans to choose a different path. If it takes a year, it takes a year. It takes a year. It takes a year, I'll still be here. I'm not leaving until Libya is free, then I'll go home. For Matthew, there was a reason he had stayed behind. His friends. They shared stories of the reality of Gaddafi's brutality against the revolutionaries. He himself had already been exposed to the regime's treatment of its people and wanted to help the Libyans regain control of their country. You know, what motivated me to go at the time that I went, which was before NATO was involved and when, when it was you know, a real gamble about whether we'd win or not, was because I had friends there, good friends. And they were telling me over the internet about family members being killed or or arrested or injured. Um, you know, the best that can be done in America is supporting protests, rallies, uh, writing letters as opposed to congressmen, um, doing articles, media, Twitter. I don't recommend going to fight. Libya's freedom from Gaddafi's reign is only the first step. There are many other nations that are not yet free from oppression. Matthew urges Americans to understand each country's political situation and consider the issue from the shoes of the citizens. Once we understand, we can then contribute in a meaningful way. We also need to take action now. This trophy was given to Matthew while he was in Libya. It is a symbol of strength, freedom, and victory, represented by the shield. However, the trophy is also made of glass and will shatter into an irreparable mess if it's dropped. Likewise, we can't turn our attention away from the Arab Spring. If we do, the dreams of its citizens for a free future will never come. Their aspirations will fall and shatter, becoming deferred dreams.